All right, guys, so I got a request from somebody who had seen some of my cap sim videos. It's been a while since I've made one, so I figured I would go ahead and give essentially a, a help out for this, this team. This team is currently on round three, as you see up here. This is uh, currently we're in the year 2020 when I'm making this. This is uh, probably spring semester for somebody. Uh, I've covered up their names here on the side. That way you can't see them. They're on the Andrews team, and it looks like the other teams are either computer teams or their names just weren't added on there, and that's fine. I'm going to scroll down and show you some of the information that I have marked up. Now, they have told me they have some problems with customer service and market share. It looks like they've been graded a zero on those two things for the last round, and they want to find some way to bring those grades up, of course. So here I show that compared to everybody else's profit, Andrews is not doing very well. In my opinion, I see that, but the little X there to say, hey, this is something you need to look at. So how do we take care of that? We'll see that as we go down further. Here in the market share, you'll see that Andrews only has an 11% market share. That's pretty low. Uh, it's the lowest one that's out there. I know that when I was playing the game, I believe that I was always the top or really close to it. So there's something that Baldwin and Digby are doing that is making it so that they can outpace Andrews and the rest of the pack, honestly. So let's take a look at some of the things they're doing. Let's see some suggestion ideas on how we can make this change. Here on the stock prices, uh, it looks like right now Andrews has the lowest stock, the stock price. Now that makes sense because they're not making, they're not making enough money, uh, whereas Digby and Baldwin are. They are making money, so they're separating themselves from the pack. That makes sense. So we'll take a look at that too. So I'm scrolling down. This is a lot of gobbledygook that you can read through. It is, it is good to know what all of these are. Uh, for instance, your long-term debt being, uh, I believe this is in thousands, so $10 million. Total liabilities, $12 million, $12 million etc. Um, it's good to know those. I'm not too interested in those right now because there's some raw data that you can totally make a difference on. Now, take a look at this. You have Andrews only has one product. That's the very first thing that I see, and that is a problem. That's an immediate problem that I notice because in this simulator, the more products you have, the more market share you gain. Now you're in round three, about to make round three decisions to go to round four. It means you're halfway through the game and you only have one product. It is way past time to add another product. Matter of fact, nobody else is adding them, which is what makes me think they're computer uh, teams. So you need to add a product right away. Not only one, but if you can, do two. And that's going to bring up your market share and uh, hopefully bring in even more profit too. So one of the things that you're, you are doing well, it looks like, uh, is that you're forecasting well, because if you only have 70 products left at the end of the term, that's actually really good. That's much better than somebody like Scent down here, where they have zero, where they're stocked out most likely. Uh, Feast did a phenomenal job in only having two. So the lower you can have on your inventory without hitting zero, the less money you're spending on inventory costs and the more profit you're gaining. Now your age, your performance, your size, your price, and your MTBS make a huge difference in how you're going to sell your price. If you notice, and I'm speaking to this team and, and you, if you're watching this, this is also to you. If you notice that your price is way below everybody else's, except for maybe East, you know, there's one team, look, there are two teams that are below you. You might want to evaluate that again, especially when you scroll down and find out that they aren't the ones necessarily on top. So let's take a look at this. This is the low tech market, which is where you only have one product. The most important thing to the low tech customers is the price. Is your price between there? Yes. And the lower it is, the better they're going to like you. So 41% of that is based on that. So I see why you lowered your price, but it's not that necessary this early in the game to be that much of a price leader. For the ideal age, you have three, three years old. That is the, that is the second most important thing to them. Well, if you come down and look at your numbers, you're right in line. You're at 2.89, which is about perfect. And let's see, for the MTBFs, you're actually on the low end. So this right here, this 14,500, that needs to be changed. That needs to be brought up in line with everybody else. Look, you are the worst 
when it comes to MTBS, which is partially why your customers aren't as satisfied with you. If your MTBS, MTBS, excuse me, were at 20,000, if they were reliable at 20,000, that is 21% of the people liking you is just from having that being reliable. So if you can bump that up to where these people are, 17, 18, 19, I would put it up probably about 18, five or 19 if you could, but it is gonna make a change in, in how much your product costs. Uh, for you to, to, to build. Now, your performance and your size, that's not as important. It's the least important thing to somebody in the low-tech market. You happen to be right in that sweet spot. So let's look at it. You're at 6.2 and 13.9. And up here it says 6.3 and 13.7. So you have probably kept it charted on some kind of drift sheet, which is good. For those of you watching, if you don't have a drift sheet and you don't know how to make one, uh, refer to the Refer to the video I'm going to put up in the top corner for you to click on that little I in the top for information. Click on that. You'll find a video where I know a lot of people have joked about me being in prison when I'm making this, this video. I just happened to have a brick wall behind me and wore a shirt that was that color. So anyway, click on that and I will show you how to make a drift sheet and it will help you tremendously in your forecasting. So once again, let's go take a look at these numbers. So you need to increase your MTBFs immediately. You need to, your customer awareness is fantastic. They know who you are. Uh, as far as the promo budget and the sales budget, you're doing a phenomenal job. You're actually beating everybody else out. I would keep those numbers where they are. But your uh, accessibility, that's going to grow as each round comes into play. Don't worry about that so much. Just focus more on, on the information right here on your performance, your size, your MTBFs, your age, and your price. Now, you're going to need to make a change here pretty soon because these dates or these, these, uh, this right here, the performance and size, the ideal position is going to change between each round. So you're going to have to make a change. What I would do is I try to put it out so that it's about two years or three years out from the from where you want it to be, mainly because once you make a change, it's going to drop this in half from 2.89 to 1.45. So you're going to be half of ideal, uh, but by the end of the year, you'll be at 2.45. So that will be fine or, or something similar. So you're going to want to make an, a change that will probably put you two years out. Uh, that will move you from, if you can see my cursor, the middle of the pack to a little bit to the corner. And then it will the center will slowly build to you. So keep that in mind. Um, so you need to change the age. This round is, is the ideal time to do that, increasing the MTBFs. Increase your price a little bit, maybe to $30 uh, to still be in line with the pack. And also uh, adjust your ideal position for the low tech. Now, your new product, you need to introduce a new product because you are drowning. You're not getting any profit because you don't have enough products out there compared to everybody else that has two. That means they have twice as many products bringing in money. So you need to put something out that's going to match you in the high tech. Now, up here in high tech, you can see where it says the ideal position is the first and most important thing. You can also use that drift sheet that I talked about earlier to tell you where the ideal position is going to be for the high tech. So what you want to do is you want to create a product, put the performance and the size to match right where it's going to come out. What I mean by that is, you know it takes about a year to year and a half to create the product. So look a year to year and a half in the future and see... Uh, what this performance and size needs to be at that time and see if you can match it and keep moving it until the performance and the size that you choose match the date, uh, match the amount of time it takes to build it with the time it's going to come out. So for instance, that might be a little confusing. Um, if this round ends in 20, next one ends in 2024, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to, let, let's say that the product will come out in April of 2024. Well, in April of 2024, the performance and size will not be 9.5 and 10.5. Instead, it may be, you know, maybe 10.0 and 10.0. Um, so what you want to do is you put in, put in this performance and size, see how long it takes to do that, and then look at your drift sheet on a month-by-month -month basis and see if the date that the product actually comes out on the market and can start selling matches the performance and size of that month. And if you don't understand that still, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ask down below and I'll, I'll see if I can create another video to explain it. But I do have the drift sheet that should explain that for you. So 
So what you want to do is you want to build something that's high tech that is going to age into the low tech. And what that does is it gets you uh, gets you selling the product for a couple of years as a high tech and then eventually as a high tech and low tech. And then in the end, as a low tech market item that will gain you a lot of market share. So that's the ideal thing to do is have the drift sheet match with your products as they as they coast along through the rounds. Now, it takes three years to get to the ideal spot for low tech, which means you got to be three years out on the drift sheet on that to see if if it can hit the high tech. Sometimes what I have done is I keep something high tech and I will keep it going high tech until about round six. And then I will move it to where it needs to be for round uh, eight or not. Uh, yeah, around eight for the low tech item. And that will give it the age, just about the age it needs perfectly to match the last round to get your last little oomph out of the game, out of the simulator. All right, so you don't have any products in here, so that's a big wah, wah, wah. Uh, I need to take care of that. Now down here, you have your how many shares, uh, what your market share is right now in the low and in the high. Almost always, uh, as people that have low, uh, low tech market, uh, products they're going to be selling in the high tech market as well just because they run out of products and you're able to get some in there well you know that's nothing that I would want to rely on uh, each one of these will tell you what the growth is going to be for instance you see in the high tech statistics the next year growth is going to be 20 percent so when you're when you are forecasting these make sure you're keeping in mind that I believe low tech goes up 10% and high tech goes up 20%. So this year, the amount of sales was 6,708. Next year, it's going to be 671 more than, than this year. And then next year in the high tech, there, there's going to be a 20% increase. So you're talking another 740 or so. Um, so do keep that in mind when you're doing your numbers to forecast them properly. All right. Here's your map, you able or right here. So you need to have something to go into your high tech that'll be here, that will drift in, that'll drift with these circles to make it low tech and high tech in the future. All right, and that's where I'm saying, eh, you only have one product, you need more products. Everybody else has two. All right, this is also the round where TQM comes into play. Now, there is an information bubble within CapSim. And because I don't have access to CapSim, uh, because I'm not a student anymore, and it's been a couple of years, I don't remember exactly what it was, but there is a maximum uh, where at some point you get diminished, uh, diminished returns. So I believe if you do 750, then 750, and then 500, your third round of being able to do TQM, you have maxed out what you're able to get from it. Um, you're going to have to take a look at the information bubble that's that's within CapSim to, to find that out for sure. I can't remember if it was 500, 500, and 250, or if it was 750, 750, and 250, or something similar. But you're going to have to look that up. But definitely max out your TQM on everything that you can. Uh, all your competition will, so you might as well as well. And that's the same in, in real life. Uh, all businesses are going to fight with you. And down here, I put I, I noticed down here that there is sales of common stock. I assume that means that you are selling your shares of your company. If that's true, do not do that. Don't sell shares of your company to, to gain money. What you need to do is get cash from long-term debt. So go ahead and borrow money to get what you need to be able to do your R&D and everything else. The long-term debt will be the, the best one in my experience. It all depends on interest rates, but that's going to be probably your best route. And uh, just, you know, as long as you forecast your numbers properly and do your drift sheets and everything properly, you, know, you should have plenty of cash at the end of the, the next round to be able to do what you need to do. So I don't see anything else in here that I got to cover. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to comment down below. Um, I think this is a lot of fun. This, this does have a lot of... Um, this does have a lot of links with re with real life business. So there are things that you are learning from this, such as how many people do you need? How many on overtime versus not? How much was that causing the turnover rate? For instance, your turnover rate right now is the highest and you need to lower that down. And there are a couple ways that you can do that. Uh, recruiting costs by raising that, that's going to help you uh, make people a bit happier. Training costs, you can notice that you're not training anybody. You're spending zero dollars on training, which means you are having turnover because people, if they're not being trained, they're not being very good and not as productive on the work site. 
Uh, recruiting, you're spending zero. Why would I want to come work for you when everybody else is paying me $2,000 to come work for them? So keep that in mind. Uh, increase your recruiting spend, increase your training costs, and make people happy. And, uh, and you'll find that your human resources will cost less. You'll produce more. And, um, and you'll end up getting better points. So I think that covers it all. You guys are doing okay. Uh, you could be doing a ton better. So at, at least you reached out to me within round three. And let me know how round four goes.